Good morning guys. Well today we're going to be tackling the hydraulic issue with the bounder. Now I don't know if most of you who have hydraulic leveling systems in your motorhome, if you ever got the little buzzer when you know your landing gear is completely up it's all the way up uh, now most people can't find where their pump is now some bonehead engineer decided to come up with this idea now most people would think there's a reservoir here because if you look in your nice little manual it tells you check the dipstick for it no location whatsoever telling you where it's at so you have to kind of go on a scavenger hunt trying to find it as you can see uh, I don't see nothing. Uh, I see my engine oil. I see my transmission fluid. I even see where I put my antifreeze in. I also see my overflow tank for my coolant. Hmm. But, hmm, where could it be? Look down around here. No, not there either. Huh. Where could it be? So, you do some more searching, do some more searching. Yeah, I can't find it. Can't find it. Where, where could it be? You know? Well, most people look they don't know where it's at especially if you've never dealt with one before so what I done was I come down and see this here is my line for my jack so I followed my lines back and I follow them back through there now you see there's a little bit of moisture there and I thought that's where it was coming from but that's not where it's coming from why I have the problem with having low fluid but I'll show you what that's from but anyway, you track that down. See, it goes way back under there. So we come back outside here. And, all right. Now on the bounder, here's your reservoir. Right here. Now, let's see if we can get this under here. Hope there's enough light. Now there's the lines that I was showing you up front. You see them coming in. Well, this is your pump. There's all your solenoids. This is a three jack system. So I checked all this wiring here. Everything's connected securely. No disintegrated wires. They look a little rough, but they're in good shape. Anyway, you see this nice little white cap here. That's the culprit of why ours is making the noise. Because either last time this was serviced, it was never tightened the rest of the way back down. Therefore, when it was under pressure, it blew off some hydraulic fluid. So, there's where we're going to start. So, what we're going to do today is I'm going to go ahead and remove said cap and dipstick let's see if I can get my hand up here and do this and let you guys see but just remove it and you see how how tight that one was now I did not loosen that I reached out and touched it and it spun in my hand but as you can see there is a little dipstick on the end of it and <laughs> no fluid so therefore and it should, in theory, be the cause of our warning indicators going off with our jacks up. But when everything is said and done and it's tightened down the way it's supposed to, you're going to need a pretty good sized wrench. This particular one here was a one and one eighth. Um, so, yeah, definitely want to keep some big wrenches handy in your motor home. So, what we're going to do here now is we are going to get this off, get us a funnel, and we're going to top this system off, and we're going to check and see if everything works. Okay. Now, I don't have a funnel that will actually fit in that hole with me here. So, I should go ahead and go down and buy a new funnel, but that would require me to go to the other hill as Walmart or back to the auto parts store. I got a little story about the auto parts store here in just a moment. Um, 
So to save myself a headache, to save myself a little bit of um, having to deal with idiocracy today at its best, I am going to go ahead and make my own funnel. And I'm going to use said clear solo cup. <laughs> We're going to see if this works. Now, hopefully, this works out well. And to make your own funnel, you can make it out of anything, guys. Uh, you get creative. Uh, just so happens I have some of these clear glasses, clear cups here in the motorhome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the bottom of this. And then I'm going to slice it up the side. Then I'm going to make my own funnel. And hopefully I've got tape to <laughs> tape this securely shut so it goes in there so that way I can uh, do that. But anyway, let's get started here. And it helps to have a reasonably sharp knife if you're going to do something like this. Uh, it'll just be so much nicer on you if you actually have a reasonably sharp blade. As you can see, I do. Mine's going through it pretty much like butter here. Um, the biggest problem I'm having right now is it wants to curl up because I have cut out the stabilizing part of the cup. So, there. That's all we need to do for that. Now, like I said, see how flimsy it got after removing the bottom there? That's what kind of was holding it all together. So now I'm just going to take and slice the cup right up the middle, like so. And voila. Okay, so what you're going to do is get you some tape to do this. Well, that's what I'm doing anyway. I'm using some electrical tape because that's what I have handy. And I'm going to wrap that down there nice and tight. That way it keeps form. And then I'm going to go ahead and wrap that around here a few times to keep it nice and tight. Keep some sort of shape to my little funnel here. And it helps not to have oil or grease, especially if you want to use... Um, something like electrical tape because it doesn't want to stick to any dirty surface. So anyhow, this is what we're doing. Make it nice and tight. That way it holds the form. And I have made many things out of tape and things that shouldn't be the way they are. <laughs> but it works, right? So you got to play MacGyver once in a while. Anytime you have anything mechanical, you have to learn how to be MacGyver. You know, even though his was scripted and Half the stuff that they probably did really didn't work anyway. But uh, this, in theory, is going to work, and it's going to work fine. So that's what we're going to do now is we're going to put the funnel in there. And this should. See my abo? I see you. But, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so in theory, this is going to work. And like I said, we have a little spill area. So what we'll do is we'll slide this in the hole up there, and then we will put a little bit of transmission fluid and then we'll top off that tank so let's go have fun okay now before you go adding this kind of stuff because most of these take just transmission fluid uh, but some actually require a special fluid so you want to check your manufacturers specifications now this one here of course we're GM and I think this is probably why they did this but this manufacturer this said pump here they have actually elected to use the Dexmerc transmission fluid, which is compatible with most uh, Chevrolets. Um, so, this one here is the multi vehicle. But you can see. So, this will work, and I really don't need a whole lot of this um, in theory. So, I think the dipstick there is only for that certain amount uh, that's supposed to be up there to keep the sensor from going off. Because um, if it was completely bone dry, they wouldn't work at all. So, here we go. As you can see, they really didn't make this in a great location here to do anything with. And they got this nice little shield here. It's supposed to protect that from gravel and stuff like that. Uh, but it actually, it's kind of hindrance in the getting to what you need to get to. So let's see what we can do here. As we've already put the plug back in, because we didn't want to put any dirt in there. So, bring that out of there, get the funnel, make sure there's no dirt in your funnel, 
Nah, well, they got something hanging on there. What is that? Nah. Piece of fur. <laughs> piece of piece of diesel fur. All right. Now, let's see here if I can get my funnel to cooperate with me. Uh, let's see here. Ah, oh, there she goes. She's in there. Now, of course, as you can see, we have a, <laughs> a slight issue here in trying to get that in there. Let's see. Might need to cut my funnel down some. Yep, back to the drawing board. Didn't say this was going to be an exact science. Okay. We've made some modifications here. Let's see if we can get that in there. See? See what I'm working with there? Yeah, we don't need that. Well, I zoomed you. Yep, so there's the hole. And everything's right in the way. May need to put this camera down to attempt this. Because this is not going to work properly. Well, that might work if I can get... I seriously doubt I'll get that in there, though. Um, yeah. Might need to cut this down further. Okay. Well, my first idea on how to make a funnel there didn't work. So, more hillbilly ingenuity. I made a squirt bottle. <laughs> hey. This, in theory, should work. It allowed me to get up there and squeeze the bottle. I poked a hole in what was an old 20-ounce Mountain Dew bottle lid. So, this should be a little easier to apply and add fluid. So, let's see. Whoa. It's not the perfect fit. I'm making a little bit of mess, but you can... Oh. Oh, uh, shit. Alright. As you can see, I made a mess. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I guess we'll have to get a rag and clean that off a little bit. So. Yeah. It works. It's kind of crude. But, uh, of course, it made it a little more of a mess than I wanted. But we wipe that off with a rag. So, yeah. We'll see. Anyway, we're going to let that drain down there for a minute. And then we're going to stick the dipstick back in there and see how much fluid we actually got in the reservoir. Alrighty, so we got that in. Let's check it out and see what we got on a dipstick now. Yeah. Wingo bingo. She's full. She is full now. So, what we'll do is we'll put that back in here. Um, and we will tighten that back up. Now, you want to be easy on tightening this up because it is a plastic cap. You don't want to over tighten it because you will sure enough um, bust one of those threads off of there. And I imagine it might be a pain in the butt to go find said dipstick. <laughs> Just so you know, it may kind of be an odyssey. Well, we got my luck. It'll be an odyssey anyway. But, I'm sure it'll take a decent crank, but we don't want it to be losing all the fluid and causing the problems that we're having now. So, so just don't over-tighten. All right. There she goes. She's nice and tight. Like I said, just don't over tighten her, guys. 
Well, that was fun. <laughs> oh, Lord, how mercy. How AutoZone has failed. <laughs> they need to rethink their whole um, management people there. <laughs> so, all right. I did my little bit of research on what kind of fluids that uh, our bounder takes according to our manufacturer specs for our hydraulic leveling system. Uh, it just needed some, you know, standard transmission fluid for a GM. Um, anyway, I go into AutoZone. I start, you know, proceed to the uh, their transmission fluids. And the only thing I'm seeing back here is transmission fluid that is like $12.99 and $15. Uh, I don't need much transmission fluid. Um, I'm not going to use that for anything else. So anyhow, so I asked a simple question to this said AutoZone employee, just happened to be the manager. I asked, do you or do you not carry a house brand of transmission fluid? Because uh, usually it's cheaper, and for what it is, it, I don't need the highest dollar transmission fluid on the market. So anyhow, this person proceeds to tell me what I need. Now, mind you, this person had no idea what I was working on. This person had no idea <laughs> if I was putting it in a Ford, a Chevy, any of this stuff. And just proceeded to tell me what I needed. And I said, well, hold on a second. Now, I repeated myself to them three times. I said, I didn't. I just want to know: Do you carry the AutoZone brand uh, transmission fluid? And they proceeded to keep telling me what I need. And I finally said, "Well, that's amazing that you know what I need when I never told you anything about what what I'm working on here." Um. <laughs> so apparently, they took great offense to that, and uh, told me, "Sir, you need to calm down. I, calm down. Okay." Uh, you need to check your attitude, sir. I'm sitting here thinking to myself, well, you know, I didn't walk in here with an attitude, but now I think I might be starting to get one here. And like I said, as I was reading this individual shirt and seeing that they're the manager, I'm thinking to myself, well, that's that's what's wrong. That's what's wrong with AutoZone nowadays. <laughs> they got idiots like you that have not the faintest clue of what the hell you're doing in here. So on that note, guys, have some sort of idea what you're going to the auto parts store for because some of them are very incompetent. Now, there's a lot of them out there who do know what they're talking about, but arm yourself with a little bit of knowledge. Just don't take everything that they tell you at the auto parts store as gospel. Now, you know, what I needed was for a GM model. Now, if I happen to have a Ford and I bought this thinking, oh, okay, they tell me I can use any transmission fluid. Uh, they tell me what I needed. And you did not tell them what you were, you know, using or what you were going to be applying this transmission fluid to. And um, you took that GM transmission fluid and stuck it in your Ford. You're probably going to have some issues. And it's all on you to figure out why, how, then it's out of your pocket fixing your mistake over an incompetent person telling you what you need and when they had no idea what you were even working on. Um... News say, simple question, turn into an odyssey because uh, apparently simple questions bewilder the staff at AutoZone. So, anyhow, <clears throat> moving on. So, yeah, I did do some wiring checks and stuff like that um, to, to locate that there wasn't anything wrong with the board inside uh, for the leveling jack. Because what we were having was the issue with the alarm going off with the jacks all the way up it was saying you know you know saying it was down and of course you know getting out and double checking double checking then i noticed uh when i moved it i made a little bit of a left turn it kind of went off so then i got to the looking to think and started uh looking into it a little further there's a there's a sensor inside there so the fluid up apparently was not at the level to touch the sensor and when i pulled the dipstick out of the reservoir it was dry so uh I'll show you that here in the video. Uh, put that in there now. Everything seems to be working great. Uh, the noises subsided. It is no longer ringing. Tell me my jacks are down when they're up. So we're going to put this in the wind column. And with that being said, 
Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned to Rolling with the Bullens here and following us on our journey and getting ready to hit the road full-time RV. And don't forget to live your adventure. Come over and see us at RollingWithTheBullens.com. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that button down there and subscribe to us and come follow the idiocracy called Rolling with the Bullens. And we'll see you guys soon.